I'm going to take these in numerical order. There are, I'll make a few preliminary comments. Uh, there are several bills in the legislature and before the Revenue Committee as well as in the Education Committee and, and one or two in the Appropriations Committee that truly could deliver meaningful property tax reform or relief. Uh, some of them are, when, when we talk about the difference between relief and reform, relief, uh, I would say, uh, in terms is that uh, it's reducing the property tax burden on a short-term uh, basis, such as the appropriations that we've seen made to the property tax credit fund in past years. Uh, reform uh, changes more of the, the tax structure, the balance, as uh, far as who's paying for the various uh, burdens or responsibilities that our state, at uh, the state and local level, choose to make priorities, such as education and uh, many other uh, services at the county level, state level, uh, could be going to corrections, uh, many other issues as well. But uh, So there is a, a distinct difference to us as far as what relief and reform are. And we're working on both uh, avenues to solve the property tax dilemma of what property owners are paying in a disproportionate share of taxes in the state. There are many, uh, specifically the state chambers of commerce, uh, Lincoln and Omaha chambers, as well as uh, some of the members of the legislature, including the, the chairman of the Revenue Committee, Chairman uh, Jim Smith from Omaha, who contend that income tax reform and relief is much more important than property tax relief, and that uh, income tax relief is a, a more of an economic stimulus than property tax relief. We strongly disagree, and uh, many of the bills I'm going to talk about today have been introduced either at our request or we have been part of the, the uh, work with other groups to help put these together. The first one that I want to talk about is LB44, introduced by Senator Dan Watermeyer, one of our champions in the legislature. He's on the Appropriations Committee, was recently reelected to his second term uh, in the legislature. He's from Syracuse, Nebraska. He uh, and some other senators, uh, there's a couple other bills like this, but uh, I'll focus on this one. It would create an internet sales tax. Some of you may have seen in the news recently that uh, Amazon uh, has volunteered to collect sales tax on online uh, purchases that uh, even though they don't have a physical presence in Nebraska, there are uh, bills or proposals uh, on the federal level to address the situation as well, but uh, several states are now taking it into their own hands to collect the revenues that are associated with uh, those particular transactions. One of the things that this does uh, is that it helps put Nebraska's businesses on a much uh, more level playing field with those that are out of state doing online transactions because where our in-state uh, retailers uh, have to charge a sales tax, those outside of the state that do not have to charge that have that uh, six or seven percent advantage uh, over the uh, the ones that are headquartered here in Nebraska. So we support this. Uh, it could generate as much as a hundred million dollars in new revenue, uh, which could be used to, to go a long way uh, in relieving some of the property tax burdens. We testified in support of this bill and also encouraged the legislature to direct any of these new revenues. Uh, to property tax relief and, and or reform. There were several groups, uh, Farm Bureau was one of those, that uh, met with the governor yesterday. Uh, there were six agricultural groups that met with the governor, and uh, that would be Farm Bureau, the Nebraska Cattlemen, pork producers, corn growers, uh, soybean growers, and dairy. We all met with the governor yesterday uh, to talk about his valuation bill, one of his priorities, and we'll talk about that bill in a little bit uh, more detail in, in a little bit. However, uh, when the governor was pressed on the question of whether or not he would support uh, 
these new revenues going to property tax relief, he was quite evasive in his answer. Uh, there's uh, uh, a significant movement. I'm not saying that uh, it has the majority of senators to, and the governor to move it in this direction, but there's definitely a significant movement uh, initiative on the part of Senator Smith and the governor and others to direct any new revenues into the state uh, that are coming into the state with uh, the creation of, of an internet sales tax or other new revenues to direct those to income tax relief. Um, the meeting got contentious. Um, all of the ag groups uh, and their leaders pushed back uh, very strongly. However, the, the governor uh, was quite set in his ways and his opinion that felt that, uh, I mean, most of the conversation uh, was for about nearly an hour and a half was directing more things to income tax relief uh, rather than property tax relief. So we have a lot of work to do to convince the, the governor to see the balance where it needs to exist and to eliminate or reduce the disproportionate burden on property owners. But at this point in time, um, you know, we have a very steep climb uh, to get him to come uh, to the point where he sees that property taxes, which he campaigned on, uh, is a much more important issue and uh, the reform need for that than income tax reform. So uh, that's a, a little bit about some of the behind the scenes work that's going on, but I want to make sure that all of you are aware of those conversations, those negotiations, and what we're up against. 